So my name is Sam. I'm currently 23 years old and I'm living in Ottawa, Ontario. So I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was 16 years old. I was actually very late um, because I used to memorize as a child. So they just never thought I was dyslexic. I used to memorize all these words. I feel like my experience throughout school was difficult because I didn't have the extra care, especially in elementary school. Um, they diagnosed me with a learning uh, disability, but it wasn't uh, dyslexia. Uh, then high school, I found it really harsh because I was like adjusting, I guess, to being dyslexic. And um, they do have like things set in place when you do have uh, issues, even just like focusing and stuff, like different rooms, laptops. Um, but I also found that was like kind of isolating you from other kids. I don't really know how you would like go about it to make it better, but I found it was hard to like go into other rooms and not feel like you're different. I feel like the way they supported you was through technology and like the quiet spaces, but I think what they lacked was like the mental aspect of things like that on children, on teenagers who are growing and trying to make sense of their world. I felt like some teachers were really great and other teachers were kind of just like, almost like I, I didn't care enough to be there. My dad is also dyslexic, which in his day and age, they just didn't really diagnose it. Um, but then since I was diagnosed, he started to realize that we had really similar tendencies and he actually dropped out of high school when he was younger. So, because the school system just wasn't ready for him, I guess. And um, yeah, he found it really difficult to like be there, but my parents have been like, number one in my life like would stay up every single day with me after school would like do memory games like play a bunch of games with me with spelling um just so that i could like stay up to date with the other kids and they also had two other kids on top of that so <laughs> some strategies i've used so when i was younger i already said this but my parents used to like kind of turn it into a game for me um so like spelling and stuff it was always like really visual and like hands-on because that's the way I kind of learned um so they would like sit with me and instead of like watching tv or doing other things we would like play um, spelling games I also found that when I do presentations I always put my um my work in calm sans I think that's how you say it. I don't know how you say it but uh it's honestly really easy to read and I put it like Sometimes I'll put that at like 18 and it's super easy to read for people who have dyslexia. Someone told me this and I started using it in like university and I found it so much easier. I also uh, would like write out the words, like any words that I had difficulties with, I would like write them out in like segments so that I could like break them down to pronounce them. So even if they didn't look like the word at all, I can't even think of like an example of this, but just like little words that like sound like the thing so I could say it. And then as I progressed through university, I always made sure someone would check over my work because I would forget things or the, the computer would autocorrect to something that's actually a word, but it's not the word I'm looking for. So that can be a problem sometimes too. So the university I chose was Wilfrid Laurier, which is in Waterloo. Uh, mainly because of the program, I took a bachelor's in honors communication with a specialization in visual media. So I did choose this on the program, but then I also really liked the school community. It's super small. Um, so I like felt really comfortable uh, talking to my teachers about issues I was having in class because they didn't have as many students, especially as we progressed on to like upper years. There was probably like 20 of us. So like I didn't have to, like they already knew at that point and everyone uses laptops in the class. So it's really nice to just like have a laptop and not have people question why you have a laptop in the classroom. Um, and they were also really good. They had a really strong program for people who have learning differences. So I found it like they're really accommodating. I could go in there and get my like work checked. I could go in there and sit in, in the room that they had set up for us, that I could go study, um, do exams in different rooms. 
uh, and yeah, usually whatever I needed, they could help like clarify assignment too. And they could always email the prof if I felt uncomfortable doing it. So they would email for me and be like, she's having difficulties. Can you explain it better in this term so I can explain it to her kind of deal. So it was really nice. I'm very stubborn. I'm super competitive. I grew up with two brothers. I needed to prove to people that I wasn't going to take anyone's like BS and kind of, I went into a program for reading, writing essays and it was almost to like prove to myself, but to prove to other people uh, that I could like make it in the world that they said like that I should probably just um, do more hands-on learning, which is not a problem at all, but it was kind of like, you should ask what I want before you tell me what I should do. <laughs> like, just because I'm not that good at it doesn't mean I won't succeed. It just means that I'm going to have to work a lot harder than other people. But I found it, like, made me a lot stronger in my abilities. And, like, a lot of people have even noticed that my writing has become way stronger. So, like, the more you work on something, even if you do have, like, an altercation with it, like, I think you just get stronger. It's, like, practice makes it perfect, you know? Like, I think first year university was probably my hardest year on me and there's a lot of times I was like maybe I shouldn't be here or just because you're getting hit with all these new terminologies and like for me the way I, I coped with things was memorizing stuff um, but you can only memorize so much and since I had really difficulties like sounding things out in front of other people I found it difficult to be in university when you had to be in class and like talk in front of other people or like talk about words um but i i definitely found like university made me grow up i guess i like moved away from my home like learned how to do things on my own um but it definitely made me like more unique and creative like i knew what i was capable of i think it's it's this level of challenge too like i'm definitely someone who enjoys being challenged so it was, it was good for me um, but yeah, I think my university experience was just a lot of fun and I met a lot of really cool people and you just realize that there's so many different people coming from different walks of life and you realize that like, yeah, everyone has their own things that they're not good at either. Like I'm really good at presentations, I would say, but like my friend's better at writing. So then we'd like use each other to like, she would help me write my scripts and I would, I would present them and she would make the presentation. It was just like, you kind of work off each other and you use those people around you. Definitely like lean on people in, in, in university is what I would say. I think in high school, I was just, I was also more scared to like ask for help too. And I feel like in university, they have a full like place dedicated to people who are really struggling with school and stuff. If you're reaching out for support, they are gonna provide that support for you. Um, they definitely have a lot of, uh, I guess they're, they're also like bigger and um, it's a really close knit community. Like it's still a small university. Uh, so I found that for me, they were really s supportive. Um, I was set up with someone right away. Like as soon as I got into school, I had meetings with them and then you could set up more meetings and come in whenever you like kind of deal. I don't know how it is right now because of COVID and stuff, but they've definitely been there for me throughout it, even when I forget to like make the reservation to go in and, and do my test somewhere else. And then I'm freaking out 24 hours before because I realized I didn't click the button. With university, my strategies have probably changed more. I started like buying audiobooks and I found that more helpful because I don't read as fast and they do assign. A lot of readings um so i would just listen to audiobooks and like type on my laptop what they were saying and sometimes i'd have like the the page open with it so i could like read along while they're like talking to me um i found that really helpful or like even when i'm at the gym then i have time to like listen to the audiobooks if you don't have time and you want to go do something else or like sit on the bus for work you know like there's so many other things I also found that for me, I took a lot of like notes, even if they didn't make a lot of sense, especially in class. Like I never did that in high school, I don't think. 
like from what I can remember, I don't remember even taking notes in class. But then university, like when you're in lecture, I would suggest like either writing down notes or having your laptop open taking notes. Um, and yeah, the presentations, I still use similar font to what I've always used. And I think, yeah, I, was, I, I said that I use a lot of memory work, but I feel like that is very specific to me and it might not help other people, but that's literally how I learned how to cope. Um, but there's definitely other strategies and like, yeah, just using the resources around you because more likely or not your prof is happy to talk to you because they don't have a lot of people come up and just have a genuine conversation with them especially in like first and second year like people are so scared to go talk to their profs and i'm it's just like they want to talk to you and they want to see you succeed do you like don't listen to what other people have to say to you unless it's like really constructive then i mean go for it but um I almost just didn't go to university because I was told that I couldn't go. They were just like, you probably shouldn't go. And it made me like really self doubt myself and like made me really critical. Um, but like, as I said, everyone there is using computers. Everyone has different ways to learn. Some people like have like stuff where they like talk into their laptop and it types them types things for them and like you can use that during tests you can use that all over so i just i think like whatever you think you can do you can definitely do it i think it's all like a misconception and even if even if you can't then you know you pack up your bags and you move on kind of deal like you'll find something else like you're so young when you graduate high school that i feel like you should just do what you want to do and don't really let anyone else tell you that you can't do it. L learning a lot about being dyslexic and like reading books on it and um, learning about really impressive people that are dyslexic. Like if you look at a, a bunch of CEOs of like really, really interesting companies are dyslexic because they think outside of the box. So it kind of just made me feel like, all right, like I'm not that good at this, but I have other things that I'm definitely good at. So I got to like emphasize on that. So I'm working for Shopify right now as a support advisor, which is basically like an online role. I'm like troubleshooting IT, but it's all like customer service. So it's a lot of typing, a lot of like communicating what I need to get out there. Um, but I think like overall my plan is to hopefully go back and do my master's. I'm not sure yet 100% in what I'm thinking maybe um, therapy. And then I want to be very successful in society and then use my powers as a support person for people who are dyslexic um, or have a learning disability. Like it would be amazing to do like TED talks on that stuff and just like show people that, I don't know, like that it's okay to be different. Cause I, I grew up with like dyslexia and ADHD, which is like, as a kid, I was probably front row, like, I was like the troublemaker, like someone who didn't sit still, didn't sit, wasn't quiet. Like, um, so it's like really interesting to me that like I came out of school fine and I feel like parents are so nervous about their kids being different. I just think, you know, those are some of the most successful people who have dropped out of high school or didn't like the school system. And I, I feel like we should start normalizing more, uh, not necessarily not finishing school, but doing um, like different type of learning styles maybe. I, there's definitely been times where I've been very unhappy and feel like I don't fit in and it stems from just being a little different and having a lot of problems with school and how the system's set up. Um, and it's been hard even with jobs too. Like I feel like a lot of people who have similar things, a lot of them are entrepreneurs because they're so, they need that like constant like um, creativity and just like moving and doing stuff. And so I found it very difficult to navigate my way through sometimes and my mental health does get affected by that. But then there's also like so many great aspects to things like that that you kind of have to remember and it's honestly 
kind of cooler when you finish something that people thought you couldn't. You're almost like so, so proud of yourself. I definitely have learned that from my parents. Like my parents are definitely supporters. Like my mom works for the Royal Ottawa Mental Hospital. Like she's very big supporter and like being different is okay. And like, just like feeling your emotions are okay. And like, sometimes it's gonna be really hard and you're not gonna fit into everywhere you go, but like there's something out there for everyone, no matter what it is. And like how big or how small, so.